Okay, we're good. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. Back again with Billy from anxietyunited.com. Hello again. Hello again. You're looking good today, Bill? Very bright. The sun is shining. Very bright. I'm Finally. in my cave in my office as usual. I have to- I gotta get some better lighting, dude. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the lighting won't last here. We've got one day of sunshine. That's all we're permitted per year. That's the law over there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, today we are done with our anxiety 101. I don't know what we're gonna start calling these. Maybe we'll keep calling it that. I don't know, but yeah, we are. We've got through the article that I wrote, and we went through all of the uh, the little headings in that, and we've spent you know eleven or twelve episodes on that. So hopefully, you guys will go back and watch some of that stuff. And uh, we're just going to start winging them, I think, going forward, yes? Sort of make it up as we go along? Yeah, man. And today we're going to talk about what is sometimes a controversial topic. It has been for me when I talk about it. And that is the idea that a panic attack isn't necessarily a bad thing. And when I say that, most people are like, are you out of your mind? Like, what are you talking about? A panic attack. You want, you want me to have you, a you panic want, attack? Are you crazy, man? What is up with that? You want me to have a panic attack? Do you hate me? Um <laughs> And I think the concept that we're talking about here, why a panic attack isn't necessarily a bad thing, is it's all related to the idea of acceptance and exposure, right, and learning how to react or not react. And the general principle, I'll throw it out then, and we can just kind of kick it around, is if you're getting out there and you're working on your stuff, right, so pick anything, going to a restaurant, going to the shopping mall, whatever, is an issue for you, and you're working on that, you're doing your exposure, and you measure the success of that exposure by... Hello. <laughs> By uh, whether or not you – if success to you is that you didn't have a panic attack, you might be missing the point a little bit. So like having a panic attack while you're doing your exposure work or pushing yourself, pushing your boundaries isn't always a bad thing. So wh- why isn't it a bad thing? Why is it actually a good thing? Well, I think – Something that I've always thought of, I don't know where I read it, it might have been like Claire Week stuff, but that was the fact that you should never wait until you feel good to go out and do the stuff. That's true. Because because you learn more when you struggle. Like when I've gone out and done, like when I did the 31 days of May or whatever it was. Right. Going out on the days where I felt okay, it was just nothing. It felt pointless. It didn't really feel like I learned anything. But the days where I felt, you know, I could feel anxiety or I was thinking about sensations, symptoms, those days when I still went out and went for a walk, it was when I came back then that I felt like I'd actually achieved something. So when you, that's when I'm learning the most that it doesn't matter how I feel. I can go out and do whatever regardless. So that for me, for me, that's the key. It's like if you, you go out and you don't experience anything, yes, it's a great thing that you've gone out and you've, you've been able to do it. Right. But if you're trying to get over this, then you want to go out and you want to stay out until you feel it. And then you want to stay out past that. Yes. And that's when you learn. That's when you learn that it won't – that you're in no danger. That's when you learn that it won't be the end of you. Right. Because the, the mechanism here is – there's two things that happen there. We, we've talked about this ad nauseum. And we'll continue to talk about it, I think, ad nauseum. The mechanism mm. there is you, we only learn through experience. This is how the human brain works. It's how we learn mm. best. And you could read about things and watch videos and listen to podcasts like ours. And But until you actually do something – yeah, you can read about speaking French all you want, but until you practice speaking French, you're not going to learn how to do it. So, and the same thing applies here. So, you, you, we only learn through experience. So, you have to experience the fear and the discomfort and the panic in order to truly learn how to deal with that, how to not react to it. That's so, it. and I think the big mistake that everybody makes, and two things happen. So, if you measure success by "I didn't panic," first of all, like you said, you didn't really learn anything that day. Mm-hmm. And in fact, you may have, you may still actually be reinforcing even more that mistaken belief. Like I can't panic. Like I can't panic. If I panic, it's the end of the world. And that's not true. That's not true. So it's so counterintuitive. I totally get that. I mean, I'm Mm. sure that you've run into people that they just think it's crazy when you say that, you know, like you almost need that. You almost need that panic attack. You need it. That's it. it. They'd rather celebrate the fact that they didn't rather than the fact that they did, but they still managed to do it. Which is that's what, the that's better the way. Success. That's yeah. the success. And that's what will propel you forward. So I will tell you that, uh, I think I might have mentioned it in one of the past episodes. It's going back a few weeks now. I, I had one of the most intense panic episodes that I've had in years. Yeah. Going back a few days, and I was talking to, um, you know, I was actually talking to the person that I was with at the time. And I said, you know, that was a really great day. 
And that person said, yeah, but you know, you had that massive panic attack. I'm like, yes, I, I had a horrible panic attack that day. I said, but that was a great day. Mm-hmm. They didn't understand why I said that. And really in the end, it was a great day because that actually made me even more, I feel even more indestructible after that in a way. Yeah, yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. You're still standing. Still standing. Like, and that was as intense as I've felt in a very long time, but it mm-hmm. was, that was a good experience to have. So you have to get to the point where you can look back on that and say, it, it sucked. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't want to do it again, but yeah, yeah. if I had to do it again, all right. Like it makes me feel even more bulletproof than I already mm. did. Mm. And that's experience. That's experience. And unless you experience the panic and don't hide from it, you're never going to get to that point. You'll always be motivated by trying to avoid it. And that's it. And that's what you've got to really buy into, isn't it? That's it, the, it is. the key thing is because the longer that you put it off, the worse that it gets, the more that you create these catastrophic images in your mind. Yes. And I'm a, a victim of my own freaking <laughs> downfall because I do exactly that. Uh-huh. And I've said it before, like the longer I leave it before I go out the house. So if I spend a few days in, guarantee it will be harder that next time. So it's about, well, it's like the very first episode we did of this was the persistence, yeah. the acceptance, the courage, all that stuff. It's all key. It is key. And without, unfortunately, the courage. And, and I did the, the series I was doing with Holly, we did a whole bunch on, on uh, courage. And it's the, the ingredient that is most required, I think, mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. Get, to get into that mindset where you will welcome a panic attack and actually look, back, look at it and say, well, this was a great – it was an opportunity to practice. Well, well, we'll jump from that and we'll discuss the fact that it's my wife's birthday today. Yes. Although this this podcast will be a week later probably, so it, it was her birthday last week. Yeah. And she wants to go bowling or go out for dinner this evening, which is understandable. It's sure. her birthday. Right. And it's only fair that we do something. Yeah. But I'm just, I don't know. It's not, I don't feel that it's like the courage thing because I feel courageous enough to attempt to do it yeah but there's this there's this thing that's just bubbling away and it's i'm fearing the worst and i went out for breakfast and i got a bit of that on a vlog and it was very very similar it's just like i'm almost constantly thinking about is it coming is it coming maybe it's not but i'm just thinking is it when is it right and i'm finding that really difficult at the moment to deal with so it's not a case of like i'm i'm feeling courageous enough to go and do it but I'm still concerned about how I'm going to feel when I'm there. Maybe yeah. that's something that you can kick me up the backside on. Well, we, yeah, we can talk about that. And so here's the way I look at it. This is the, the framework that I always put it in for myself. And, and it worked well for me. So if you look behind me, there's a guitar hanging on the wall, right? There's a. I see. By it. the way, that's a very cheap guitar. Like I've had actually people ask, what is that? That's a Squire Strat. It's a cheap Strat. So it's an office guitar. So, but if I if I grab that guitar off the wall and I start playing it, maybe I'm going to practice something that I'm not really good at doing, sweep picking or something, right? Uh-huh. So I know that right now I can't do that. Like I can't sweep pick at all because I just, I've never done it. So if I want to learn how to sweep pick, I have to keep doing it. And every time I take that guitar off the wall and spend five minutes sweep picking, I might suck at it. It sounds horrible. I don't want anybody to close my door in the office. I don't want anybody to hear it. It's horrific. It's a terrible, you know, sound. But I know that every time I do that, I get a little better at sweep picking. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I think, well, you know what? If I do that every day for five or ten minutes a day, in in about a month or so, I'll be a lot better at it. And maybe three months from now, I will know how to sweep pick. So I'll Mm -hmm. have mastered that skill. And I used to do the same thing when I was going through what you're going through and doing my exposures. Like, well, today as its own incident might suck because I might Mm -hmm. be in the car and really freaking out and very uncomfortable. But – but in three months, if I do this every day, like I just have to do this practice and it will build on top yeah, of each yeah. other. Mm-hmm. And if you did it every single day, then you, you're actually working to a goal. Like you'll, you'll learn how to sweep pick or you'll learn how to go out to dinner with your wife and be not good at bowling. And you'll, you'll be a better bowler. <laughs> You'd be really good at bowling, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that makes any sense. Like look at those, look at those exposures. Practice. As practice, it's just like, mm-hmm. you know what, I'm going to spend, like I always use, the, you know, I'm going to pick up my instrument or I'm going to practice speaking Spanish or whatever you're trying to learn how to do. Those things aren't unpleasant like our thing is, but mm-hmm. try not to judge things. We, we put so much emphasis on each individual episode, I think, people like mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Right. So you're very focused on what's going to happen tonight going out to dinner with your wife or going bowling. 
Mm-hmm. But it's just one practice session. It's like one five minute session with my stupid guitar. That's um, the way I try and think about it. I try and think like I know deep down when I sit and really think about it, I know that I'm gonna get through it. Right. I know that tomorrow morning I will have done it, and it's not going to have affected me. Right. Any major way, you know, I'm still going to be me. Maybe I'll feel a little bit more tired, perhaps, if Maybe. I spend like two hours in there tense yeah. as a piece of wood. Yeah. You know, but maybe it goes okay. But, but at the end of the at the end of the day, I will get through it. That's right. why I try and think like I know that I will, and it's only like two hours out of my life. So, but and, and if you visualize that as you know you're on a road and you're trying to get to the end of that road, maybe you'll be a little more tired for having had the experience, and maybe it went well or maybe it didn't go well. But but you've actually taken more steps. You're closer to the end of the road. Yeah, yeah. You know, so instead of judging that experience for what it is, it was I was I was anxious. I was worried about it. I was thinking about panic all the time. I you know I didn't mm-hmm. enjoy myself. All right, well that was just one practice session. There's going to be another yeah. hundred yeah. to get to the end of that road. So when it's over, it's over. Understand that you took a few steps and then get ready to take the next few steps and try mm-hmm. and always look at the larger picture where you're headed to, as opposed to what you're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and to me, that's always been when people ask me, well, why should I welcome a panic attack? Well, that's why it's an opportunity to practice. I mean, I don't welcome a panic attack, but welcome the anxiety, like understand that it's going to be there. Don't expect that it won't expect yeah, it yeah. will, you know, mm-hmm. and, and every time so- you go through it, you get better at it. Somebody inboxed me on Twitter the other day and asked um, that they're struggling with anxiety. What can they do to get rid of the symptoms or something like that? Right. And I and my reply was just stop trying to get rid of the symptoms. That's the way to get rid of the symptoms. Yes. Is to just they're there. That I always refer to what you said, like the symptoms and the sensations are not anxiety. They're not the disorder. Right. And that's you know the more power that you give them. Because that's what I'm always focused on, and that's what I will be later. I'll be like maybe a bit of dizziness or – because that's the usual thing for me. And somebody commented on the last video asking about dizziness yeah. because you've you've referred to having dizziness yeah. you know, back then. So it's like how do you – and when we went for breakfast the other day and I had the dizziness as we were walking towards the actual pub. So I'd got out of the car. It was probably only about 50 feet. And each step that I was taking nearer the place, I could feel myself – sort of going yeah but i just i slowed down and it it's probably the first time that i've done it in a long time anyway like usually i would stop maybe turn around go back but i just kept going at exactly the same pace that i was you know i just got out of the car yeah. and i could feel i could feel it and it was horrible but i just kept putting one foot in front of the other and by the time i actually got in the place i'd sort of i don't know it had stopped i'd stopped that sensation had passed and then it was on to the next one but it was nice to just like usually I'd reach a point, I'd take a step and then I'd stop and yeah. I'd think about it and then I'd probably make a decision to head back to the car, freak out, fall out with the missus, yeah. you know, yeah. end up going through the drive through. But no, I just kept putting one foot in front of the other, no change of pace, nothing. Yeah. And that really worked for me. And then I got through the rest of the, you know, I, I did feel anxious and it was a bit weird, but I, I still got through it and I felt bloody good after it and, and maybe that symptom didn't go away i mean maybe it did it, theoretically when you get better at it so take dizziness and, and it's still a symptom for me like if i mm. if i i know when i'm going when i'm feeling anxious because of that like that is yeah. an anxiety symptom for me or that unsteady you know that unsteady feeling yeah, yeah it's weird so you just keep putting one foot in front of the other no faster no slower you just keep you're methodically like focused in the moment i'm just going to keep doing this exactly the mm. way i was just doing it I'm mm-hmm. going to just let that dizziness be there. And maybe the symptom goes away and maybe it doesn't. But, mm. you know, in the end, what you just did there, that was practice. Like you got exactly. better at dealing with your dizziness. And if you keep mm. doing that again and again and again, but you can only do it when you feel dizzy. You can't practice that when you're not dizzy. That's the point. And I think like because I experienced that then, like this is the this is probably the crucial stage that I'm at now. Right. Because I did I did it the other day and I yeah. felt that dizziness and I didn't like it and I don't want to feel it again. So tonight, to go bowling, I know pretty much 99% sure that I'm going to get out of the car and I'm going to have to do it again. Yeah. And I think this that's the crucial part. It's like knowing but doing it anyway. Yeah. That's the point, isn't yes, it? Yes, knowing that yeah. it's coming and doing it anyway. And that's where the courage yeah, comes yeah. in. And I, mm. and I think – and also the patience, understanding that 
I think also a lot of people wind up in that situation where when they're still focused on trying to avoid it, I don't want the symptoms. I don't want the panic. Success yeah, yeah. is not feeling that way. It's the wrong goal. I always say all the mm -hmm. time, that's the wrong goal. The, the goal is to like be able to panic or be dizzy or unsteady or whatever your symptom is and not care. And that's not the care. goal, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, then suddenly that will go away. Trust me, that's the way it works. <laughs> like when you don't care if you're dizzy or not anymore, you'll stop being dizzy. It's, it's yeah, just, yeah. It just is. So the wrong goal. But I think the point is you got better at it a little bit better in that, that time than you were before. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. now you'll get a little bit better at it again. And what I always try and tell people is that's great. You just can't wait a week or two between, you know, you get like go and do something tomorrow that makes you dizzy. Yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do that, you'd be surprised at how fast you get good at it. Mm -hmm. Much faster than you think. And you're right. It's probably a key spot for you right now. Like, yeah, yeah. You, you I feel it, that it's crucial. Yeah. You did it. And now you got to do it again. That's always the, mm -hmm. you know, like. That's always the thing because patience, we talked about patience, you know, courage, persistence, patience. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, unfortunately, we don't fix stuff in one day, sadly. Well, that's it because, I mean, like I'm fine with at the moment. I mean, going back six months, I was losing the plot when I was just driving my daughter to school or anything like that. But now I'm comfortable with that. So sure. I'm, in that, I'm in that comfortable zone. I can drive to my dad's. I can go to my dad's, have a cup of tea there. You know, take him shopping, sit in the car while he's yeah. in there. So I'm yeah. still not going into shops and stuff like that. But so, like, going out for breakfast was a pretty big thing. Yep. Because, like, even the drive through, even sitting in the queue at the drive through is enough sometimes to tip me over the edge, which yeah. is really weird because I could drive to the drive through for like 20 minutes. Yeah. But it's sitting in the car for five minutes in a little bit that you can't get out of. Well, because you can't get out. Yeah, yeah. So it's that escape thing. Sure. But it's just, it's so strange. So strange. But the more you do it, and I think let's try and turn this into a positive. So we started by saying. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That, that's all right. No, no, no. It, no. And it's okay. These are good conversations to have. I think we started by saying that, you know, our, our concept here is that a panic attack is not always a bad thing. And you could almost, if you're listening right now and you're in a situation where you've pretty much stopped everything, you're not working, you're not going to mm. school, whatever, and you're, you're homebound, possibly a little agoraphobic, you know, this could be your full time job. Like you mm. could actually do this stuff full time. And you, I think you know this. And when we first met, yeah, yeah. we were both almost in that kind of same situation where it became, for me, it almost became almost, even though I was still running a business at the time, almost my full time job. And when yeah, you yeah. dedicate your time and your resources to it, you will be surprised. The more practice, like any other skill, the more practice you do, the better you get at it. Mm. Just unfortunately, this is something we have to practice that's very unpleasant. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the only difference there's no difference so like anything else the more you do it the better you get at it you just nobody wants to do it because it's not fun my practicing the fun things the disheartening thing for me was that i sort of went on a real nice trajectory and i was going out for, for dinner and going shopping like yeah. two th two three years ago yep i didn't i didn't think about any of this yeah but then i something happened and i don't really know what it was but I just started going downhill. Yeah. And I think the thing for maybe we're just predisposed to if we don't manage it or if we don't stay on top of it, there's always that chance that we can go back down there. And it's it's I, I feel that it's harder this time to try and I don't know what it is, whether it's a it's not really a courage thing. I guess confidence. Yeah, because I, I feel like I got there once and I got back down there so easily. Like, I'm definitely on the way back up now. Yeah. But I, it's felt harder this time. I think sometimes it's because of the confidence thing might be one thing. Your confidence takes a hit, for sure, mm. you know, when that happens. I think that's a real thing for almost all, for me too. You know, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I'm not careful, you know, if I'm not careful, I could slip back into some bad habits, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, even to the point where I think we mentioned this in one of our episodes. Like, even if I have, a, like, the winter is coming now, or the, the fall is coming anyway, the seasons are changing. So in the winter, when it's cold and nasty and snowy around here, like you can easily go a weekend and not leave the house just because it's nobody wants to go yeah, out. Yeah. It's crappy weather and everything. Yeah. So you have a weekend where you're just inside. Even to this day, Monday will be just a little tougher for me because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I was just like in my cocoon all weekend, you know, watching football or American football, or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Monday morning could be just a little harder. Yeah, yeah. Even now, all these years later. So I think it's something we have to be vigilant about. Mm. But the key is like, stop trying, stop judging by su success by the lack of symptoms or the lack of anxiety. That's not success initially. 
That's the mm. ultimate. That's how you know you won the war. But each battle is not – that's not how you win each battle. Yeah, yeah. You know, you win the battle by experiencing it and getting through it anyway. So – that's it. That was the yeah. <laughs> that was so, the point we were trying to make. It is. So this is this is why a panic attack. This will be a clickbait title. A panic attack is not a bad thing. Yes. We're giving away our secrets, dude. <laughs> our YouTube marketing secrets. Our extensive yeah. secrets. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, I don't know. Do we want to add anything to that? Do we have anything else we want to throw? I mean, we could just keep rambling and just going from topic to topic here. We'll just be like a three week. Just episode. trying to think. I just know that. In experience, I felt that I've learned way more. I, I've caught panic attacks on film, like doing one when I was out shopping. And we've spoke about the feeling that you experience after you've gone through it. Oh. So, like, it's just, I don't know. You can't explain it because it's un, it feels unnatural to actually go through a panic attack. Yeah. And the, the calm after the storm. So even, that's why it's that's why it's worth going through it just to experience what that feels like. If yes. anything else, it's magic. It is magic, and you know what's so funny the, when you say the calm after the storm. I think it's it's worth noting that. So you welcome the panic. We know it's a good thing because it's a, it's an opportunity to practice. Like this is good. I practiced this. I got through it. Mm. Sometimes even the calm afterwards is slightly anxiety producing. It was for me. Mm. that change in state from being like way up here to being down here because you're exhausted and you know you're, you're just feeling kind of wrung out and drained and that could yeah, be tough yeah. and i know that sometimes that feels a cycle too but that just a quick mention of that that's part of it like when it's over and you have rode that wave and you're through you're gonna crash mm. you mm. know so that calm is almost an extreme level of calm because you just yeah you're, yeah you're out of adrenaline for a little while till your body can yeah, soup yeah. up again that used to freak me out a little bit but so the, in theory if we break this all down yeah you cannot you can't fail the only way that you can fail is if you bail i guess yes you know, there's a there's there a slogan go. for yeah. you <laughs> there's a bumper sticker let me get because that, if you get that into production if you, right now yeah <laughs> uh, if you if you stick with it and you ride it out then that's brilliant yep. or if you say if you say bring it on and it doesn't come on then that's brilliant yes because you're you're still you're not trying to hide from it yeah you're willing so, yeah. to take it yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. that's true that is really really solid right there you cannot well if you go out and do the work you cannot fail the only time that you fail is if you run from it yeah either stop go back home don't go out to begin with or start doing everything you can to keep it from happening yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but even even then now you know what i'm gonna say i'll just i'll be controversial and say that's probably a fail if you are out there and you're using your mints and your the bottle of wine, <laughs> I would say so. I you know, all, so. all the funny things that you threw out in your last video, which, by the way, if you guys have not subscribed to Billy, you got sixty to, seconds. You have to subscribe because <laughs> it's very good stuff, and he's also pretty funny sometimes <laughs> with that stuff. Oh, so, um, yeah, if you're resorting to your safety behaviors and you're dancing around the, the panic and trying to make it not happen and trying all your tricks and calling your mom and all the stuff you do. Mm. Well, that might not be the best exposure to do, or the, the best forward progress, but otherwise, there's almost no way to fail. Mm. So that's that's really good. It's every time gotta, you go out, it's a it's a bonus. You've got to go into it willing yeah. to to face everything, or willing to just experience everything, can you? And that's the yeah. So me me going bowling tonight, I just need to go and just be prepared to either come out on foot cheering because I won, yeah, or in a freaking ambulance. That's, but but you know? even if you go out in an ambulance, <laughs> you will end the night back home anyway, right? They're going to yes. send you home. Nothing is, is wrong. Go home, young man. But if I'm in an ambulance, it won't be because of panic. It'll be because I've dropped a bowling ball on my foot, maybe. Or, Most likely, yeah. Or yeah. someone else's foot, and they didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I get that. But uh, And to get past it and just to, you're right, to experience. And I think there's something somewhat addictive. And this is, I find, and we're going to keep going here. We just, we never know how to stop. But I always find this fascinating. What makes it, for me, I can only relate my own personal experience, that feeling when you get through it and you have faced it and I didn't snap a rubber band, didn't pop any mints, didn't take a pill, didn't do any of that stuff, and it was over in 10 minutes uh -huh. or 12 minutes. Uh -huh. You know, that feeling like, you know, it's just, you know, like world beating, like bring it, man. You could do anything. It's almost addictive for me. It is. But I think it's also the same reason why some people love to go to amusement parks and ride roller coasters and jump off. Adrenaline jump. Yes. Like there are some people are. Adre I'm not that guy. I don't want to. I don't need to jump off a cliff, no, you know, but uh, some people are wired for that thrill or people that love speed or whatever. For me, it was 
I was very motivated by the challenge. Once I did it a few times, like, dude, I want to do it again. I need to, I want to, I want to do it again. You know, like, so maybe if you're listening, maybe you're that and you don't even know it yet. Yeah. 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 If you just let yourself get to that point where you, you just feel like freaking armor plated and invincible, you'll want to feel that way again. So yeah. And I'll tell you the other reason why panic attacks are not a bad thing. They will teach you shit. This is it. They will teach you shit. I am a far more effective business owner, leader, dad, like than I was before Uh because it taught me shit and I was willing to learn it. So that's another reason why this is not always a bad thing. You will, you will grow and you will be a little taller and a little stronger and a little smarter and more patient. And there's just so many lessons to be learned in this. So Uh let's Uh embrace them. Got to get out there. Yeah. Get out there. So, all right. I think we did okay. We're 25 minutes into it. <laughs> I think, uh, we don't, yeah, we not, I like these podcasts. Yeah. We, we just, there is no, uh, topic. I had a couple of comments. One was, sure. uh, mentioning out of the out of body experience, but again, we're, we're going back to a symptom, hmm. but somebody was saying that Do they it. were lucky. They were lucky enough that they could remove themselves from the store. Cause they used to work in a cosmetic store right. and take a break. But what if this was in a meeting or an interview? I guess the answer is that you weren't lucky that you were in a store and you could take a break because right. you didn't really learn that you it weren't going to harm you. Right. That's the point. Mm. Right. You weren't lucky. You should, you know. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter whether that person was in the store, in a meeting, performing surgery, mm. you know, playing in concert with Pink Floyd. It doesn't matter what they were doing. It still mm. would have passed. If you just let it go. That's it. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a really good point. It's, a, you know, what what do I do if? What do I do if? And yeah, then yeah. We hear that question all the time. What do I do if this happens? Nothing. What do I do if it happens there? Nothing. The answer is always That's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Let, it, let it happen. That is the simple answer, isn't it? You should just carry on. It is a simple answer. Regardless. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just keep going. Just keep doing what you're doing. So exactly. You know what? If you're listening right now, just listen to what Billy said not too long ago. When you got dizzy and you just kept putting one foot in front of the other. Mm, mm figuratively speaking, that's what you do. Like I'm driving. I'm just going to keep driving. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm talking to my, this person that works with me. I'm going to keep talking to this person that works with me. Mm. I'm just not going to stop. So that's that. So who knows what we're going to talk about next week? No idea. How long have we gone for? 27 minutes. It's a short one. It's a short one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to upload two of them now. I'm behind. We're going to, wow. we're going to, we're going to definitely discuss social media and the internet. Yes. And the effects that that can have on uh, anxiety. Yeah. So we'll save that for a feature length. Feature like that could be a multiple parter, you know. Ooh. There's the good and the bad. We can talk about both of those things. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea, you know, we're like we're figuring this out on the air. This is good. But I mean, if anybody has any suggestions on what you want us to talk about or how to talk about it. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I like kind of like the idea. We'll pick a topic. We'll, we'll chat about it for a while. Maybe we'll take some some comments and stuff at the end like we just did. Mm. That's a good. That's a good format. It's reasonable. We got to do the the medication as well. We got to. Yeah, we're gonna do one of meds at some point. If you if you've made it 28 minutes into this and you're still listening and you have an opinion, you want to hear about meds or not meds or specific meds, I guess chime in, comment. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I get it's the thing I get asked about more than any other thing. By far, it's got to be worth. Yeah, it's worth a discussion. Yeah, so we'll do that. Especially with your your experience as well. That's the. I had a different experience. I won't start getting into it now because I could talk about that for yeah, hours yeah. on end. But yes, my experience was was what shaped my opinion. So I'll talk about that one. Day. Uh, uh, I guess so that's, that's yeah yeah. So that's the deal. Let us know. Let us know what you were. Uh, do you want us to just ramble for forty minutes, <laughs> or do you want us to stay on topic? You know what? That's the point. One day we w- maybe we'll even arrange. Maybe we'll do a live one one day too. We could have people. We, we did discuss this, didn't we? Comment or even call. We could set up a Google number or something like that. Two numbers, one for you, one for me in the UK. Um, I'd be happy with that. It would be fun. I'm up for that. What? Let us know if, you, if you're interested in watching a live we'll, we'll episode. Do a live. Yeah. Where you can actually interact, call in, comment as we go. Yeah, it yeah. It'd be fun. The other thing that would address, and we, we really got to wrap it up. We should keep these at 30 minutes if we can. But yeah, yeah. One thing that I have noticed too is I, I think. Even this podcast can become a safety behavior. We'll talk about that one day. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. for us so much, but for people that are listening. Like, I, I, it's great that they're listening, and it's always awesome to get comments from people that feel like we're helping. Yeah, them. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I, I actually know of one friend personally who I love to death. She's she's a dear. And like when she has to go out and do her exposure, she will put her headphones on and listen to my audio. Right. So right. I, I've become a bit of a crutch. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We should talk about that too sometimes. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so let's wrap it up for now. As usual, yes. Anxiety United. Anxiety United. Right? That's the one. Yep, or on Twitter, Anxiety United. For me, that anxiety guy dot com or that yes. anxiety guy on all social media. Bring it, whatever yes. you got. And I guess we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. We will. Thank you. Uh, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to like and subscribe, right? Um, hit you that thumbs like. up. Smash the like button in it. Smash, Smash the, the like button. button. And, and what is it? The subscribe bell. with notifications on. Right. The bell icon on YouTube. I'm getting good at this YouTube. You are now. getting good. I'm, I'm taking, putting a bit of time in. I'm going to have to. I'm going to hire you. I need YouTube lessons. Yes. Thank you, sir. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, man. Catch you later on. Thanks, everybody. Ta-ra. All right.